Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the studio this evening where I am going to attempt to paint this, this old rusty pickup truck out in the middle of a field somewhere. <laughs> there I am, right there. Got the truck in the upper right hand corner and my paints in the lower right hand corner. It looks as though tonight I'm going to be using my M. Graham paints along with Rubloff brushes and uh, my Dana Squirrel Quill Mop brushes. There they are right on cue. There's my Rubloff brushes. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the painting. I'm going to walk you through what I did, how I did it, and when, well, well you'll see when I did it. <laughs> but we'll get going with this. So I've just got a big, fat, wide brush right here. This happens to be a Rubloff brush as well, and I'm going to use it to put on the sky, I can just use it to cover a lot of area in a very short amount of time. This is a little bit of cobalt blue. Maybe I got a little bit of ultramarine in there, but uh, it's no matter. It's just a gentle sky color up there. I don't want the sky to take over anything that I have done, so I'm just going to put in some basic general colors. There it is. You can see there's a little run on there. My painting surface is slanted at this point about 30 degrees so uh, the paint will only run in one direction I can control it a little bit more and there we go quick as that the sky is done uh, you see me talking in the middle pane on the right hand side this is a condensed video from uh, a, an online session I did uh, I've condensed it down to about 40 minutes, which is great because the entire thing for me to paint took about three hours or so, and uh, I don't know that anybody wants to listen to me talk for about three hours, so I decided to kind of cut this down a little bit, and we'll go from there. There we go, and it's using this big brush to get in a little bit of color here and there that looks pretty good to me I'll probably leave it just about like that all right all right all right and now we've got to wait just a second for this to dry and we'll get right back to it uh i don't know what i'm talking about over there but here's the painting Thank you for pointing to it. <laughs> what we need to do is worry about a couple of things here. How do we get this good rust color on here? And how do we get a good windshield color on here? And in order to do that nice rusty color, I've got a good way to do that. I use a little bit of burnt umber and a little bit of maroon perylene. Um, those to me mixed together make a nice gentle rust color i'm going to put that on in one layer very light and then we'll go over it and enhance it in the second layer uh, wherever we need to but here's a little bit of the glass that's going on first and this is just a little bit of blue a little bit of turquoise blue with a little bit of Payne's gray in it uh, i love to use that as glass you can also use it as metal um, depending upon the way that you mix it here you can see there's a nice light spot in here and there's a, some dark areas I'm just gonna drop in something to give it a little bit of uh, a look that's not quite so flat it's really bright and shiny uh, side window I'm not even sure what this is called quarter window or something vent window I'm not even sure what that's called but that little tiny window that's got much more turquoise in it. There we go. And now we need to just dab on a little bit of color. I'm going to paint this one panel at a time, right? So this front quarter panel is going to get painted. Then the door is going to get painted. Then the hood's going to get painted. Then the back quarter panel is going to get painted. Not necessarily in that order, but that's how I'm going to do it. Uh, and each time I go back to my palette, I'm just adjusting the color of this a little bit, right? It's not going to all weather at the same amount. You can see there's a little bit more red at the top. There's a little bit more 
uh, yellow at the bottom here, right? I'm taking a little bit of artist license. I know I'm not, I'm not using the reference photo as, uh, as a, as a Bible here. I just want to use it as a reference. It's mine's going to be a little bit different and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. So I'm just gonna dab on my paint here and there. You can see when I go back into my paints, I'm just touching up the color a little bit to make it a little different here and there. And then uh, as I do this, I notice maybe that's a little bit heavy uh, in there. So I'm just gonna dab off a little bit of paint there. It's just not to worry, it's still gonna be uh, nice and light. We're gonna get some beautiful colors in there. And uh, anything that's too light, uh, uh, from this coat, we'll make up on a second coat. There's maroon perylene, a little bit of azo orange in here this time, into that color that's already been mixed on our palette. There we go, right across the front, just whatever you call that above the grill. There it is. I don't even know, I'm not the biggest car uh, master in the world. All I know is it's a cool looking truck. A little rusty, but that's okay. Just means it's got a lot of character. And there we go. I'm going to paint the inside of this grill. And then I'm going to go back and paint in all of the dark areas in, that are set inside there. So I'm going to do this in a couple of steps. Right? And I want that hard edge on there a little bit. So a little bit thinner paint here. Just let that first layer dry just... A second and then we can go back in sneak back in there and do it all right now we're gonna move up here and there's a little bit of extra paint up there I'm just gonna dab in that little bit right that wasn't actually underneath the hood that firewall right there was actually underneath the hood and wasn't as exposed to the elements but this part that I'm painting now is outside and it's definitely exposed and it's gotten rusty and then the door right next to it, some serious rust on that. There we go, and just draw that down. And you see, I'm trying to adjust those colors. I don't want them to be the same everywhere. And right down here, there's that, yep, yeah, there it is. There's some blue right there, right? Some of that original paint got left on there somewhere. And then back into a little bit of rust as it come down all the way down to the bottom of the door and the running board. All right, we need to take a little bit out. Maybe it's a little thick. There we go. Anyways, it's going to make it look more mottled, more rusty when we do that. And that's kind of a cool thing. All right, all right. Here goes the roof. And I'm not worried about painting where the door and the roof meet at this point. Right, I know they meet at the top somewhere. That's a small detail. We can put that on later. We just want to get a base of paint on here, a nice base of color. And there we go. Already you can see it's looking pretty cool, right? Okay, and moving on to the next fender. A lot of repetition here. I, I realize that we're mixing color. Uh, we're trying to vary the colors. Not necessarily at this level trying to vary the intensity of the colors, but we are going to get a little bit of that in here. And that's okay. Right? The, the depth of field in this painting is not so deep that we can't make uh, the rear fender that you see that's, that's so much darker. We can't make that darker than the fender that's in front, right? We don't, we don't have to worry about that kind of stuff at the moment. And we might not have to worry about that at all. All right, there's some blue back here. Definitely some blue back here. Uh, and I'm just dropping that in so that when, so that it's already there when my brush touches it. And again, there's a lot of detail back there on that rear fender that I'm not even going to worry about. Right? I, we're just trying to get a little bit of color on there at the moment. And yeah, maybe a little strong. We'll just dab a little bit of that off. Beautiful, beautiful. Looks great. Almost done with our whole first layer already. And it's looking good. We've got a couple of extra areas we might need to do a little bit of something. 
as an aside note, right, I didn't leave uh, room for any weeds growing up in front of the truck right here. And maybe this would have been a good time uh, to do a little bit of that. Oh, I always do this. I always, I know there's a back window in here and I forgot to put a little bit of color in there. <clears throat> All right, so uh, I didn't leave room for any weeds in here and uh, maybe I should have, maybe there's a little uh, oversight on my part. But I'm not going to worry about it too much. We'll be able to figure all that out. Okay, we've got a really dark area underneath this wheel well under here, right? Uh, I've got some blue here. All right, it's just ultramarine blue. And it's got a little bit of gray in it. Maybe a little bit of black in there. Just something to darken it down so it's not a bright color. And we're not too worried um, about the exact shade of it yet. It, like I said, it's, this is a base coat and I want this to kind of blend into that area in front. That's kind of where my uh, weeds are going to be. And then the same thing back here, right? Uh, but because I'm not really paying attention to any weeds in here, I might have to start thinking about it soon <laughs> or else find a different way to put some weeds in this painting, uh, but we'll get it one way or another. I'm not uh, too worried about it. And then we got some darks underneath here that you can see. And in this area, you can really see where on the reference photo, there are some weeds that grow up underneath and maybe it would be nice uh, if I had whited out some of those or made uh, other provisions in my drawing for those to, to be there. Uh, but we're almost done with our whole first layer already and this didn't take very long at all uh, and this really should be a quick layer and then the, the next ones we're going to start to add a little bit more and a little bit more detail to and those might take just a little bit longer of a time so getting very close over there and right around that rear window something uh something like that nice straight line oh we got this wheel that we're going to do something with and we're going to do something with our grill. So I'm just going to take our dark color here. It's just ultramarine and, and a little dark. Uh, you could call it Payne's Gray. You could use it if you wanted to. You can mix it with a little neutral tint if you wanted to or a little black if you wanted. It's just a dark. It's got a, a lot of blue tint to it. And I'm going to fill in a few of these squares. There, there, and there. Of course, I've dropped down to a much smaller brush with a much finer point so I can get in and uh, put these squares in. There we go. And there's not going to be any detail in here and it's such a small area. If there's a tiny tide line inside one because I've started in one area and moved to the next, that's fine. Nobody will ever notice it. Uh, but also it's so small it's going to stay wet for <clears throat> a little while and I won't have trouble with that. There's the next one. We're almost done with this grill. Save for a little bit of detail work uh, in, in later on. But already without putting in any shadow in here uh, to make this grill really stand out, you can already see that it looks like there's a big cavern inside there. There's something back behind that grill, right? There's a a big hole back there that's in shadow. So there we go, there it is. Just like that. Look, I'm all excited, I just finished it up. Ho ho! All right, uh, what else can we do here? Uh, we're gonna let this whole thing dry, then we're gonna come back in and add the details. I'm telling myself I gotta do that, as long as telling you that I'm gonna do that. And in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet this area. Oh, I should say, because I don't think I said before, I've painted this on B paper, right? It's 100% cotton paper put out by the B paper company. And uh, the first wash usually is pretty good, I have found. But subsequent washes, uh, if you don't pre-wet, then you will immediately get a big tide line and that is usually a no bueno so that's why I've pre-wetted this area 
uh, and I'm just going to make everything, there you go, right along this accent line for the entire truck. There we go, and we're already starting to develop a little bit of detail on this truck without doing much of anything at all. all right, this flare side pickup truck has a deep shadow under the curl of the bed. I've just painted that in. All right, and now what are we going to do? We're going to go a little bit around the doors. We're just I'm just dropping in some of the bigger shadow air bigger shadow areas. Areas where I think there's a little bit more shadow where we need to have a little uh a little bit more paint in here and then you'll see us uh very soon start to go and, and touch up all of this all of these spots. But here we go, right? Oh, a little bit of warmth. I'm telling you, a little bit of warmth and that's going to bring that towards us. Again, that's normally how it works in this one. Um, it works uh, to a certain extent, but maybe not as much as we would like. Right, and I'm um, using this time to really define some areas with these darks. Whether we need to come back in and fill in more or not, I want to... I want to know where these darks are going to be as I'm doing this. You can do this the opposite way, and you can fill in the field on all of these and then come back and fill in the darks, uh, the low lights later on. I think either way is acceptable. This just happens to be the way that I did it today. Yeah, and I just keep finding areas. Oh, yeah, there's a little turn signal down here, so... I'm going to pre-wet around that, drop a little bit of color around it, and all of a sudden it pops off the page. And here's our wheel that we didn't paint before. It's kind of a gray-green color I've got going on there. Yeah, and then, and then a little bit of yellow on with that. That's not exactly the color that's in the reference photo, but I'm imagining there maybe there's some moss or something that started to grow on this. And it wants to be there a little bit. And then maybe I can see, maybe just maybe I can see a little bit um, of the inside of, of that wheel there. All right, so now this area up here, this is a great, uh, great little thing here. This area up here, it's in shadow, but the shadow up at the top right there is should be a lot darker than the shadow at the in the bottom of the cab right there. So what do we do? Well, I'm going to mix up a really dark dark, which in this case means a black, and I happen to have Windsor and Newton black on my palette, uh, and I'm going to drop that on at the top. And then really just let it blend out as it comes down. Uh, and there it is. And you can see it really does make it look uh, like the shadow is deeper at the top. And as it comes down, uh, it lightens up because there's more, more light in the bottom of the cab as the sun shines down on it. Really gives a nice effect there, I think. And I'm going to try to duplicate that in the wheel wells uh, when I get to that. Uh, and it's about this time in the painting that I've kind of gone, well, I know what the, what the painting is supposed to, or what the reference photo is supposed to look like. Uh, and is that what my painting is supposed to look like? And I start uh, just to paint it on my own, uh, having gotten everything I need to get from that reference photo, or mostly what I need to get from that reference photo. Right, so some of these areas that I'm going to paint now are going to be much darker, and some of them are going to be a lot lighter uh, than the reference photo. And I'm okay with that. I'm doing it for effect at this point. Right, you see that the left-hand side of that bar is a lot lighter than the right-hand side of it, which would give me license then to paint the uh, far side uh, fender a lot darker. There we go. This is a nice little touch, just the dab of some shadows on that. There, just a touch of it on, on that grill. Yeah, adds a nice little touch of detail in there. Right, right, right. 
Now I've got to stop and think, what do I want to do next? What can I do? What can I do? Okay. I've got a plan. And it looks like my plan is wheel well. I should say it's actually been a quite a long time since I have painted this. Probably three months since I've actually painted uh, this old truck. And I sometimes forget the order that I do things in. So I've got a nice yellowy color here and I'm going to do a little bit of the ground here obviously. Right, a nice ochery yellow color and as I come forward I'm going to warm that up even more right with a little bit of red in it. Uh, such that, there we go, such that uh, it's warmer as it comes toward us. There's a little, make that a little warmer there. A little warmer as it comes toward us uh, to help draw that towards you. Right, maybe we got a few little bits of grass here and there. We'll see if these stay <laughs> or if these don't. Uh, sometimes grass for me is a bit difficult, but we'll figure it out. All right, and, and paint over them a little bit. All that area is in, in dark shadow up there. There we go. And if that comes down a little too far for me, I can just dab just a little bit of that off. And there we go. All right. All right. So now we've got our foreground on here or the majority of our foreground. And some of this actually looks like it's kind of growing up in the wheel well or underneath that radiator or, or front grill anyways. <laughs> Come on, Michael. Move past it. <clears throat> you painted it. Now move on. All right. I'm going to move on right now. Because uh, it's time to darken up the rest of this wheel well. And I'm going to do this the same way uh, I did with that the top of the cab there. Right? It's, it's just putting on a, a fresh coat of paint. It's mostly blue. It's got a little bit of dark in it. But mostly blue. And then I'm going to charge in, I believe. Right? Let me just charge in a little bit of this darker color even. Or not. I guess I'm going to leave it like that it's in hopes of being able to see how the grass is growing up there. All right, I want to accentuate uh, the, the, the bulge of that opening. And so I'm just going to get wet behind it and drop in a little bit of color. There we go. And that color, again, that color is not anything special. It's burnt umber with a little bit of maroon in it. If you want to vary the color, you can throw a little bit of gamboge in there or azo orange. You could even throw some yellow ochre in there if you wanted to. Uh, but it's just to uh, keep it from being a uh, two one note. Two one note. All right, well, that works. Uh, there we go. A little bit of that looked like a little bit of gamboge and a little bit of maroon perylene. Just drop that in here. And it's going to add some nice color underneath there. Pre wet it. Grab our color, drop it right in. <clears throat> and, and what I'm doing now is I'm creating uh, shadows. Right, wherever I want there to be a shadow, I'm going to create that artificially, albeit, by uh, putting in uh, these darks. And yes, I hopefully just made that look like there's a corner right there. Right, like the car isn't flat. All of a sudden now it looks like there's a bend right where that light is, right on the edge of that light. <clears throat> and remember I painted one side of this lighter and one side of it darker. The lighter side now I can put a dark next to it. There it is and all of a sudden we've got 
something going on back there. So, all right, something that looks nice. Okay, and so we're just going to continue to uh, add some darks here. And what I'm putting on is that gap between this flared wheel arch in the back and the cab of the truck. Something that's going to differentiate these two parts and really make it look uh, like it's two parts and not just a single unit coming through here. Maybe a little bit of dark back there. Just a little something. All right. All right. There we go. And just wherever I think there needs to be a darker value, I'm just going to go ahead and put that value in. Like I said, I've deviated from my reference uh, image in that I'm putting colors in where I think they need to go in best rather than where the reference photo is telling me they that it thinks they need to be right I'm using it as a reference not as a rule I got a little blue there and if I got some blue there well then the rest of this needs to get a little uh, a little darker value in it everything from that line on down there we go and you can see now there's still that little splotch of paint I put some blue in there there's still a little splotch of paint like there is on the original reference photo and underneath here around the lights there's a little valance around the lights it's got some color to it let's drop that in as it needs to be Right, it was a little dark to start with. I'm just going to move that color around with my brush and lighten it up a little bit. It was just a wee bit darker than I thought it needed to be. And there we go. We've got it on both of these. And when we come back in and paint the bulb that's in there, the light bulb, the headlamp that's in there, I think uh, that will really set it off a little bit. And just a touch of some gray in there as though there's just a bit of a shadow. That'll work out for us. All right, just trying to see what I'm doing, what I need to do here. I think I need to start adding a couple of different values in here. All right, let's darken this up. Right there. Maybe that doesn't get quite as much light right there. It's a little bit darker in that area. And then really light as it comes towards us on that door frame there there we go that looks good to me right and just trying to continue that line right on down there we get the line from the top of the fender there that we need to continue on down a little bit doesn't need to be perfect but maybe it could be a little better than it was and just a tiny little bit of blending on that and there it is there I think that looks pretty good the way it is right there we're gonna go with that I keep looking up uh, it's funny to paint with a monitor in front of you because I can see what I'm painting in two different ways. I can see what the camera picks up and I can see what my eye picks up. And oftentimes they are not the same thing. And so it's curious uh, to see what's on the monitor uh, in front of me as I'm painting. And then I'm just doing some, uh, some circle shapes here inside that rim. I don't know what's in there, but there's some shadow and some light in there, so we'll drop a little of that, a little of both of that in there. And now I'm going to mix up a little bit more dark here, and let's see what that value ends up being like. I think I need to do a little bit more on the windshield, maybe. Oh, no, the headlamps. 
All right, let's drop those in there. Is that a good color value? It might be a little dark, but not too bad. Get both of those. And uh, a little bit, there we go. A little bit of reflected light in the top and in the bottom, and maybe it'll look roundish when we're done with it. There we go. Yeah, it's funny you want to look in the look at the monitor. I sometimes need to take my reading glasses off to do that. It's just far enough away that it makes it tough. And uh, up here on the windshield, let's adjust this color too. And really, we don't have that much more to go on this car on this old truck here. It's coming together. It's it's looking pretty good to me. I want to do a little bit here and a little bit there, and uh, then we'll add some some details, you know, the fine line details to it in a little bit. Uh, but for the most part, I think it's coming along pretty good. I'm liking it. And I should say that uh, by the time I'm done with this painting, this is one of uh, one of the better paintings I think that I've done in quite a while. I really enjoy this painting. I don't know why I like to paint rusty things, browns and reds and blues and yellows. You get to you get to uh, just put together lots of different colors and mix the colors, and maybe that's just why I like it. Is because we can do a whole lot with it. Okay, now I'm going to darken up these wheel wells even further, right? So we've got that nice blue in there, and now I'm going to add in some really dark darks up underneath that wheel well. They're super dark up there. And then I'm going to blend that color right on down all the way to that ochre color grass that I've got there almost. Look at that, and that, that's going to further set everything off that's that's around that, that super dark. It's very important that our darks be dark in our paintings. right? We don't want to have our darks be middle tones, and our lights be lights, and our middle tones be lights. right? We want our middle tones to be middle tones, we want our lights to be lights, and we want our darks to be dark. That's all there is to it. Okay, I broke away there for just a minute. Uh, actually, in uh, real-time painting, it's the next day. I slept on the painting as it is and decided to come back and figure out what to do with the grass in the foreground. And what I decided to do was use some of these old paints that I'd found at a garage sale at one point in time. And these are gouaches, and gouache is, of course, opaque and so my thought is I've got some uh, burnt umber and uh, some kind of yellow paint I can mix those uh, and <laughs> I can mix those and make some grass color in the foreground and so I'm gonna give that a shot and we'll see what happens um, the only other thing I need to do is make some uh, gasket lines and some definition here on this car. And I've got a few rigger brushes here. This old one that I really like has been with me for a long time. I don't even know what size it is. Uh, and this little small one here, that's probably the one I'm going to end up using. And uh, I'll just grab some paint with these and let's see how fine of a line I can paint to... I'll get some of these lines in here. I don't know how fine of a line I could do. The other way, another way you could do this is uh, you could do it with a watercolor pencil or a colored pencil. You could do it with a regular uh, lead pencil if you wanted to. This is just one way that we can do it is with a uh, watercolor like this and a, uh, and a thin uh, color of paint. There we go. And uh, just however... I think these lines need to go on here. Just looking at the, the truck reference photo to see basically where these lines might go. Something like this. And they don't have to put the whole line on there. The viewer's eye is going to fill in some of it. So if we get most of it on there, I think we're pretty good. 
but uh, I do, but we do need some lines on here. Let's see how I can do this. Got a slightly larger rigger brush here, and it was trying to use it to get some straight lines. I guess I could also uh, use a flat brush to get some of these straight lines on here too, and then just use a, a rigger or really any other kind of brush to get these uh, curves in here. There we go. This is also a good time to use this brush to cover up any white that you've left that maybe you don't want to be seen. There it is. That's a gasket. That old gasket's been on that truck since it uh, ever roared to life all these many, many years ago. There we go. A nice line up underneath there. Don't need much more than that. There it is. Now one thing I do run into here is that line is pretty dark. Uh, you will have to decide for yourself how dark you want your darks to be uh, in this instance. Uh, if, they're, if they're too much darker than the rest of your painting in that area, then they, risk, they run the risk of being the focus of that area. And maybe that's not exactly what we want to have happen. Well, I'm going to forge ahead with these anyways, and this line that I'm putting in now maybe is my least favorite in all of them that are on this car. I don't think I really needed that in retrospect. If I had to do this over again, I probably wouldn't put uh, the dark lines around the valance, around the headlights on this car. I probably would still put these lines around the headlight like that to make it stand out, but that would be about it. All right, um, so there's that. Uh, I'm looking at it, trying to decide if it's a good thing or not. And uh, I've got a little bit more to go. I just, just whatever you want to make stand out a little bit, you can just put in a little bit of a line here and a little bit of a line there. In fact, uh, for most of it, the less you put in, probably a little better. And I don't mean by not putting in any. What I mean is not putting in an entire line. If you put in just the bit of a line here and a bit of a line there, you probably end up with a better, uh, a, a, a better mark than if you had put everything in there. And that's what I'm doing now at the end. So I'm just putting in a couple of lines here and there, something, and I'm not trying to put everything in. I'm not trying to separate all the colors or all the panels of this truck, but just a little bit here and a little bit there. Hopefully I don't go too overboard with this. I do think if I were to do this again, these lines are, are one uh, thing that I might not do all of as I paint this painting. Oh, and what do I need to do now? The only thing I have left <laughs> really is to do some grasses in the front. That's it. Let's see, I'm trying to think what do what can I put here or do I need to put anything here? I'm not sure that I need to put anything here. Just walking you through the thought process a little bit. But, uh, okay, so here we go. I've jumped ahead a little bit in the video, and it's time to tackle the grass in the foreground. And like I said, I've got a couple of gouaches here. I've got just this old palette. I'm going to mix these and make some grassy-ish colors that go with the color of the grasses in the, the reference photo somewhat, right? These are, these are just ochres and reds and some darker colors, but just enough that we're going to see something growing up there. There it is. There's something growing up in front of that wheel. Well, there's maybe a little bit of grass growing out here. 
Let me mix a little bit more. Just enough to uh, give a little interest in there, but not enough to hopefully take away from whatever it is that the subject is. In this case, this truck. There we go. I've just pushed that truck back a little bit. There you can see just mixing things here and there and drawing on some weeds at random. And I'm just going to work my way around the truck doing this. There we go. A different, little different rigger brush. Mix this up nice and thick. So we've got some stuff growing there. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Get some grasses. And I'm trying to mix the colors. More, some more red, some more yellow. Uh, so that they don't all just look one color. We want to mix all these colors in here a little bit. Right, that's a. This might be a little clump of grass on just a little, a little mound right there that this truck kind of maybe ran into and kind of settled, right there. It just was going through these weeds, hit this little bump, and kind of stopped right there all these years ago. And these grasses are just growing out of it. There it is. And that's about it for this old truck sitting in the field. I'm not going to do much more with this. There we go. I could frame this up. May no, wrong, 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 right, nope. Well, I had it for just a second. I want to see basically where this is going to fit in the frame to know if I need to do anything to the grasses in the, in the very close uh, foreground in the bottom. Maybe I can add a little bit of color, a little bit of richness to that. That'll be about the end of it, though. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and listening to this video. I had a great time painting it. I had a great time doing a voiceover bringing this to you. Uh, down below you will find links to my webpage, my Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you'll find links to donation if you'd like to help keep the uh, art studio running. I'm trying to make it totally self-sufficient. Uh, to that end, if you want to buy this painting, it is up for sale on Etsy along with several other of my paintings. You could have this hanging in your house or your garage or wherever uh, if you so wanted. <clears throat> and again, with that, I am going to call this one good. Thank you all so much for joining me here in the studio while I painted this fantastic little truck. That's all I've got for you guys this week. Thank you again, and we'll catch you during the next video. Bye-bye.